Hey guys, it's Lord of Fish. So we're back for our third match in our Modern League. We're still playing this Modern Merfolk deck, and I talked about the deck list earlier in this video, so if you haven't checked that out, feel free to, but if not, let's get into the gameplay right now. Okay, so this game we lost a die roll, and this opening hand, it's not ideal. We have three ether vials, which you really never want that many in your opening hand. It's good as a one of, maybe a two of, but not that many. But think about it like this. We still have three, th th we still have three threats between Mutavault, Silvergill Adept, and Swaylin. We can cast a Silvergill Adept and hope that the card draw from Silvergill Adept will outweigh the amount of ether vials we have in our hand. So I actually thought this hand was keepable and it might be better than what we could get if we mulliganed. So even though this hand isn't good, I think it's an okay key. But I think if the Silver Guild Adapt was a Merfolk Trickster or Master of the Pearl Trident, I would have had to mulligan this hand since A, I couldn't cast any of them because I wouldn't have double blue guaranteed, but also not having the card draw would be really bad. So we draw a Silver Guild Adapt that turn, and this turn I just decided to play out Ether Vial since, yeah, it's our turn one play. the double silver gill adept is okay it's not a good draw but it's not necessarily a bad draw i need to really know what i'm playing against in order to really see if that's relevant or not So we decided to tick up the ether vial and we drew a master of the pearl trident. So this turn I'll just play out cavernous souls and then it makes sense to turn out silver gill adept and then reveal silver gill adept. Since revealing silver gill adept basically gives your opponent very little information, it's always the best card to reveal if you can, in most cases at least. So our opponent has three mana now, so as you know, this I'm playing against Calibrated Blast. So they play the first Calibrated Blast, and I believe they hit me for 15 damage here. So this is a really um, niche modern deck at this point, pretty rare to see. It was like a thing for a little, I believe, but then it just kind of died down in popularity. So... We'll take up Aether Vial here since we have no 1 drops and tons of 2 drops. Typical to leave the Vial on 2, which I think we'll do. So we'll play out Waterlogged Grove, and there's a few options. I decided to just Aether Vial into play a Silver Gill Adapt, see what I draw, because working with better information is good, and I kind of need counter magic. So we draw Vodian Hexcatcher, and that's really nice, because we'll be able to counter a Calibrated Blast, um, and that works out pretty good. In this, in this matchup, having Vodian Hexcatcher is great since, I mean, you're going to slow your opponent down to a point where you should be able to win with it. After they take two, let's see, um, there's like a two plays you could do here. You could either run out Sway Loon. Actually, no, you need to hold up Vodian Hexcatcher. And I decided not to play Aether Vial here because what happens is, um... I would have to pay life off of Waterlogged Grove, and when you're at 5 life like this, it's pretty important to just save as much life as you can, and running out the second Aether Vial isn't that relevant. It's not like, oh, if I play this Aether Vial out, it's gonna help me, and no, it's really not. But I'm going to say right now, I misinterpreted um, Calibrated Blast a little bit, so I ran out Vidalian Hexcatcher on their end step just to um, apply pressure, but I completely forgot that Cal Calibrated Blast was an instant and not a sorcery, so they casted the Calibrated Blast in response, and I don't know why I thought Calibrated Blast was a sorcery for some reason, but I guess when I play, it's kind of similar to a Cascade card because you're flipping tons of cards until you find the card. So I was just assuming, I was just assuming probably that it was a, um, let's do that. Okay, I was just assuming it, way, it was a, um, 
it was sorcery because crashing footfalls is a sorcery speed card living ends is a sorcery speed card and i understand that they're different decks but i just wasn't really thinking about that and i said oh the dying hex catcher to apply pressure and i wasn't thinking oh they can cast calibrated blast in response and i haven't played against this deck that much or much at all actually so hope you can see where i'm coming from and let's see how we do for game two and game three all right so we're back for sideboarding i decided to bring in two spell pierces since it will counter calibrated blast really efficiently and that's pretty good since calibrated blast is their main win condition next i was between cutting spreading seas and subtlety now subtlety can really only target scion of draco and shadow of mortality so those aren't really what they're going to win the game with, but it can stall the creatures at least. Next, Spreading Seas It's not that good since we really don't need Island Walk, and Calibrated Blast only has one red mana requirement, so it's not going to really mana deny your opponent or stall them that much. Now, I was overlooking the fact that they had Baseju who shelters all, not Baseju who endures, and the Spreading Seas could be useful versus that card, Yet still, I decided to cut the Spreading Seas since it's just really not that... It's just not really that good in this matchup. I mean, you don't get too much advantage off of it, and you need to close out the game fairly quickly, and Spreading Seas just won't help us do that here. So with that said, let's get into game two. Alright, so this game will be on the play, and this opening hand, it's fine to keep in the blind, but it just doesn't have enough interaction for this matchup, so I decided to mulligan it. And this hand is much better, we have Odalian Hexcatcher and Spell Pierce as a way to interact with Calibrated Blast. Merfolk Trickster isn't that good since we're not going to be tapping down too many creatures, but we can tap down like a Scion of Draco or Shadow of Mortality, so the tap effect is relevant. And then Tide Shaper can seize their Beseju. So this overall isn't that bad, honestly. It's definitely a good keep for this matchup. So turn one, we're just gonna play an island and then pass the turn. So our opponent plays out there Beseju. Um, I just skim over it since it's been a little since I've read that card, but... And I knew this turn, it's best if I just run out Tide Shaper. They're not going to play out Calibrated Blast um, next turn. So having the Tide Shaper to make sure we can counter the Calibrated Blast is very good. Okay, so we're playing just, they just decide to play out a fetch land. They got blood crypt and they shock themselves. So they decided to play out that card, um, which will kill our tide shaper. So next turn, we're in a pretty interesting situation. We want to draw land, that, and that way we could play tide shaper, kick it, target the Basaju, and then hold up spell pierce. But we don't draw land, which means we're not going to be able to use any counter magic if we don't deal with the Basaju. It's frustrating that we can't have counter magic for the Calibrated Blast they could very well play, but remember, the first copy of Calibrated Blast will not kill us. The first copy can deal 15 to us at the worst, or at least I believe it can only deal 15 to us. That When they play the second copy, that is the concern. So right now, I have to take the time to deal with Beseju, so next turn, if they decide to go for Calibrated Blast, I'll at least, when they play the second one, be able to deal with that copy. Yet interestingly enough here, our opponent decides to pass a turn, and I think they're playing around Force of Negation. And that's fine, but we don't have Force of Negation in our hand. And now that they pass the turn, we can play, we can hold up Vodalian Hexcatcher, we draw Force of Negation, which means 
we have a little bit of wiggle room, and I said, all right, I'll go and play out Silvergill in depth. It's not like they'll do anything about the force negation. So I revealed Merfolk Trickster, since here is one of the few times I would prefer to reveal Merfolk Trickster over Vodalion Hexcatcher. Since revealing Merfolk Trickster, they're not going to have any creatures that really get weakened by Trickster. And them knowing we have Vodalion Hexcatcher as counter magic is so much more important, actually. Alright, so our opponent just passes through here, I believe. Yep. So right now we're still a little stuck on mana, but we draw the land, so that's great. And here, I said, mm, I think it's acceptable to pass the turn. We can play with Dying Hexcatcher on their end step, or Folk Trickster on their end step. I mean, we'll have a Spell Pierce ready if we tap out for that, so it's fine. Yeah, I decided to play, I believe I decided, okay, I did not. That was embarrassing. <laughs> no. Um, so I decided to just attack with both these creatures. And we're swinging in for 4 damage, which is pretty reasonable. And then before damage, I decided to play out the Vodalion Hexcatcher. Since if they do have Calibrated Blast, I'll be able to spell Pierce it. But they decide to concede from there. So... In that situation, I think they were thinking, well, they're going to have lethal really soon. I'm losing a lot of life. They have the Vodalion Hexcatcher. It's just going to prevent me from playing Calibrated Blast, and I really can't win from here. I think maybe they could have played on a little longer, but with all the counter magic in our hands, they really couldn't have come back from that. So with that said, let's get into game three. All right, so we're back for game three, and this opening hand, it's pretty it's pretty fine, honestly. Vodalion Hexcatcher is really what makes this hand keepable. We can run out Aether Vial on turn one. On turn two, we will still have the Vodalion Hexcatcher. And we could, if we take up the Aether Vial, which I plan on, we can Vial to play a Tide Shaper to sacrifice if they play Calibrated Blast on turn three. So I think overall, this hand has some pretty decent interaction. And I don't like the subtlety in this matchup, but I think it's going to be okay it just depends on what our opponent plays if there were more cards to bring in like flusterstorm for example i definitely would have cut the subtleties okay so it looks like our opponent's just gonna play fetch lands and pass and that is fine so here we draw another vodine hexcatcher just an amazing card in this particular matchup honestly sometimes you really feel not having a lord is like, like not having lord of atlantis you really feel that with no island walk sometimes where it's like ah oh, if only this vodalian hexcatcher gave island walk but here vodalian hexcatcher is just it's just amazing this matchup is super rare though so it's not like oh well since vodalian hexcatcher is great versus calibrated blast we should run we should still run four of it i think vodalian hexcatcher is going to be a three of because having like the Island Walk Lords can be more relevant more of the time sometimes. I really do feel the lack of Island Walk is big. So over here, our opponent plays Sign of Draco, and I decided it's probably best if I subtlety this. I know I don't like doing this, but think about it like this. If our opponent plays... When our opponent plays this next turn, they'll swing for four damage. And if they play that land that pings me for one when it enters, one Calibrated Blast will become lethal. I'm saving a few life, and if one Calibrated Blast resolves right now, it won't be the end of the world. Unlike if, um, I, unlike if they let this resolve and then they attack me. So, this is a situation where subtlety is going to help us, actually. And I decided to use the subtlety when I could. So this turn we draw Sway Loon. Sway Loon's kind of slower, yet still having a big body is useful. So right now we are fully operating in flash speed. Ether Vial, if we want, it can bring into play a Tide Shaper. We can cast Bodalian Hexcatcher. Right now we're just going to keep passing the turn. Yeah, this was the land. It pings me for one. So imagine this. They play that land, pings me for one. 
I'm down to 19. They attack with that sign of Draco. I'm down to 15. Then they could play a calibrated blast and then get me for lethal. So here they cast a sign of Draco and that resolves now. But what's interesting here is they're going to pass through the turn. Now we can Aether Vial into play Tide Shaper if we want to. Their um, Triome their, their trium is an island, so Tide Shaper is a one drop. And we can cast Vidalion Hexcatcher knowing they won't cast a Calibrated Blast in response since they don't have the mana. Now paying life off the Fiery Islet does not go unnoticed and I just want you to remember that. Always like Especially here, every life point really counts. It might not seem like it, but it does. So we draw a glass pool mimic here, so it's interesting. If we draw another land, we'll be able to play out glass pool mimic. But think about it like this. I'm going to probably vial into play Vodalian Hexcatcher at our opponent's end step. So if we think about this logically, oh, oh also I attack with Tide Shaper since I can vial into play a Hexcatcher to make it a 4-4 and trade with the sign of Draco. But if we think about this logically, next turn, if I take up Aether Vial, I'll be able to vial into play Sway Loon. And then I'll just have the plus side of also being able to vial into play a Glass Pool Mimic. So actually running out the land here isn't good. And it also means we're going to pay life off of Fiery Islet, which I don't want to do right now. Or I want to do as little as possible. If you're in this matchup and you're in a situation where you need to tap it, do it, but it's not ideal. So if you have any other ways to just avoid tapping your um, Horizon Land, I would do that for sure. I mean, you should do that anyway, but... So right now we're at 17 life. So if we take two more damage, then one Calibrated Blast could kill us. But we have two Vodalian Hexcatchers, so that's great. Our opponent doesn't even attack with the Scion of Draco. So here I take up the Aether Vial, and we draw a Waterlogged Grove, another Pain Land, but that's okay. So what's interesting is here, we could, the Glass Pool Mimic can copy a Vodalian Hexcatcher, which would make our Tide Shaper a 5-5 creature, which is pretty chunky, honestly. So here I said, okay, if our opponent wants to trade Cyan of Draco for Tide Shaper, I'm okay with that. I'll just be able to glass pull mimic, copy, and right now we're in a pretty good spot. We have so much counter magic. So I'm like, okay, this is perfect. You're basically thinking this is going to be a trade, but we're going to kill your scion. It's basically a chum block at this point. And next turn, now that we just dealt with that scion of Draco, we have a big board state. And... Even if we do have to sacrifice, think about this. Well, think about it like this. They'll have five mana open if they play a land this turn. If they play Calibrated Blast, that takes up three mana. So with that three mana, we can then sacrifice at least um, three of our creatures, which is unideal, but we're going to completely deal with the Calibrated Blast in that way. And our opponent is going to not go for it because they don't want to just get their Calibrated Blast countered. Also, I decided not to play out Sway Loon that turn because our board state is really good here. And they play rough, but um, that isn't going to do anything because our board is um, higher than two toughness. I didn't play out Sway Loon because I really didn't want to pay that two life. So one Calibrated Blast becomes lethal. They decide to, decide to concede here. And I'm going to be honest, um, Vodal and Hexcatcher, it... It was the card that made that matchup winnable for us in that in those games. Vodalian Hexcatcher is really good in this matchup, but as I said earlier, this is a rare matchup. You won't see it often, and it's not worth... I don't think it's worth having the playset of Vodalian Hexcatcher. I think it's going to be a 3 of, but we're going to wait and see. It's definitely going to be a card that sees play in Merfolk, but it's not going to be a card that completely makes Merfolk this zero... It, it's not going to take Merfolk from being a 0.5% of the metagame deck and make it like a whole 5% or something. It's not going to make Merfolk good again. It's going to help Merfolk. Um, it's definitely going to be a card that sees play, but it's not like... Oh, look, Vodalian Hescatcher, we, we're playing this now, it's going to completely make Merfolk this amazing deck again. In order for that, we need some more serious support in other areas. Um, yet still, good card, it definitely helped us in that matchup. And with that said, thanks for watching, I'll hopefully see you next time.